Hey, what's up guys? It's Rojo, and we are here with a new Let's Play series. Uh, we're going to be playing Legend of Grimrock 2. Uh, now, I didn't beat the first one, but uh, I played it quite a bit, and uh, I really enjoyed it, and I expect this game to be, you know, kind of more of the same with some new additions and all that kind of thing. Um, I've, you know, I've done a little bit of research into it. Um, but yeah, so Grimrock is uh, basically a sort of a, a modernization of the old school dungeon crawling genre where you uh, create a character or a party of characters and then you move around a tile based world uh, where you solve puzzles and defeat monsters and all that kind of thing. Um, so so yeah, I think uh, I'll go ahead and we'll, we'll jump right into the, the new game options. Um, we have uh, a few different ones. We can go with a pre-made party. We're not going to do that. That's not very much fun, because everybody knows that the best part of playing an RPG is creating your character. Um, but uh, yeah, we have some other options here. Old school mode basically makes it so that we can, um, well, basically we'll, it'll take away our mini map, and uh, that's that's a bad thing because then we'd have to do it with graph paper, uh, like like in the old old days, and. Uh, yeah, that's just that's not really gonna work out for me while uh, we're trying to record and all that kind of stuff. Um, so I certainly don't miss that feature of the old games. But um, but yeah, we also have Iron Man mode, which basically means that we can only save at certain uh, locations. But <clears throat> for convenience, we're gonna skip that as well. Finally, we have single-use crystals. Uh, these aforementioned crystals um, are basically. Uh, Healing, they just heal us, and um, we are just gonna leave this unchecked because of convenience yet again. Um, I'm sure there'll be plenty of opportunities uh, for me to get stuck and all that kind of thing, and so like checking these Iron Man mode and single use crystals is, or old school mode is just gonna slow things down. So uh, we're gonna skip those for for this playthrough. <clears throat> uh, so yeah, now let's go ahead and create our characters. So as you can see, we can create four, I think, as I had mentioned just uh, a little bit ago. And um, we'll just do that by clicking on uh, the Add Prisoner buttons here. Um, I do have a, an idea of, a, of the party I want to make, but I figure we'll go through the options just to see what there is first. So first off, um, we have five different races to choose from, each with their own sort of different uh, uh, <clears throat> abilities, I guess. So uh, we have Human, of course. Basically... Uh, we gain experience points 10% faster. Insectoids, which have a little bit of extra strength, but they lack dexterity and vitality. Um, and they also get a little bit of extra willpower. Additionally, their chance of uh, having body parts get injured is reduced by 50%, which sounds uh, interesting. Um, lizard men have uh, extra dexterity, but less willpower, but resist all 25%. That sounds really strong, honestly. Uh, minotaurs. Uh, super strong, but uh, and super tough, but not very uh, willpowery or uh, dexterous. And uh, they eat more, which uh, probably not a big deal, really, unless maybe you had like a party of four minotaurs, then maybe it would be. But um, that's not much of a disadvantage, really. I don't think. At least it wasn't in the uh, original Grimrock. <clears throat> Uh, and then finally we have the new race uh, from Grimrock 2, uh, or rather, the new race that wasn't in the original Grimrock, Ratlings. Uh, not very strong, but dexterous, and uh, a little bit of uh, extra evasion. The max load actually gives them more carrying capacity than they would have um, for someone with a similar strength, if that makes any sense. Um, because every point of strength gives you three extra kilograms, I believe, of carrying capacity, but they get plus 15. Um, and then there are immune diseases, which, uh, probably not that big of a deal, but, uh, you know, it's, it's a nice to have, I guess. So, uh, yeah, those are the races. And now we have a bunch of new classes, and, uh, and it looks like this, this got reworked pretty well, um, from the original. But, uh, yeah, so we have... The Alchemist. They uh, have sort of average health and energy regeneration, but interestingly, herbs in your inventory multiply. Um, so that could be really OP, honestly. And also, yeah, there's guns in this game for whatever reason. So they're, when they use firearms, there's a 50% less chance for them to malfunction, which uh, 
from my little bit of playing so far, just to get familiar with the game, is basically like jamming. I don't know. I don't know if they like ever blow up in your hand or anything, but one hopes not. <clears throat> uh, barbarians, uh, really ton there's tons of HP, and they get one point of strength per level. That sounds super good because uh, that's more carry capacity, and a lot more damage. And you gotta figure, you know, we probably get to like at least level 15, right? Something like that, 10 or 15, um, at a minimum, over the course of this game. So, so yeah, that's a lot of extra free stat points. Um, Battle Mage, whoops, <laughs> uh, Battle Mage, we get uh, average sort of average HP and energy regen, um, but the the weight of equipped armor is reduced by 50%. That sounds handy, but not like a huge deal. But can cast spells with bare hands. This is interesting because I think that anybody can cast spells in this game, but some people are going to need like a focus, like a, you know, an orb or a staff or something to do so. Uh, but battle mages don't need that. So uh, they seem pretty good, I think. Uh, farmers, now this one's sort of unique. Uh, basically, they don't get experience for leveling up and they're super weak to begin with uh, because they have low HP, low energy. Uh, and no skill points at level 1, but they do get kind of like average HP and energy gain, which is good. But the way they get experience, as you can see, is by eating food, which uh, could go very wrong very quickly, I think, because you need food to to uh, keep your characters from starving, obviously, and, and uh, if they're starving, then they no longer regenerate <clears throat> when you rest. Or at least that's how it was in Grimark, Grimark uh, 1. I assume that's the case here as well. So yeah, Farmer's an interesting uh, sort of animal. Now we also have Fighters, which have um, you know good HP and sort of low energy. Um, and uh, yeah, this is another new feature. Special attacks with melee weapons take half the time to build up and cost 25% less energy. So there's a thing where you can like hold down the attack button basically now for some weapons and, and they'll do like a special attack. So that could be good. Uh, knight, sort of similar uh, progression as the the uh, fighter, except uh, they're more defensive um, in their sort of stat buildup um, because they get plus, the plus one protection per level and the evasion bonus of equipped shields is increased by 50%, which sounds pretty good, honestly. Um, and then uh, similar to the battle mage, the weight of equipped armor is reduced by 50%. That sounds, again, handy, but not, you know, I mean, we're going to have a decent strength on that character anyway, in theory, right? So, not that big of a deal. Uh, now, rogues. Sort of average uh, HP and energy progression. <clears throat> but uh, when they dual wield, which I think this is another new feature, is dual wielding. Um, is, uh, yeah, when they dual wield, they only suffer 25% penalty to weapon damage. Um, rather than the normal 40%. So, uh, that could be good. And additionally, they get a 1% chance per level to crit with missile or throwing weapons. Um, missile does not include firearms, that's a separate skill category. Um, so, uh, at least based on how it's written here, <clears throat> missile would be like, you know, bows and crossbows, that kind of thing. Um, so yeah, definitely good damage dealers. Uh, and then finally we have wizards, which... Uh, really low HP progression, but good energy and uh, a little extra willpower to boot, and they can cast spells with bare hands. <clears throat> so basically, uh, yeah, we need to create four characters, and we want to try to build a you know a balanced party more or less. Um, another thing you can see over here is we have a bunch of different skills, but we'll get to those in a bit. And we also have traits. There are different traits for different. Uh, races, uh, in addition to some that anybody can pick. But like for humans, for example, you can you could get Fast Learner, which uh, gives you an additional 10% XP. So you know you might over the course of the game you might get like two to four extra levels uh, between your your racial bonus and then this trait, which you know sounds pretty good honestly. Uh, Minotaurs, you get Headhunter or Rage, which uh, lets you do more damage basically during certain. Uh, under certain circumstances. Lizard men seem kind of strong because they have, they can get an additional 25% resist all and they can get um, something that lets them regen faster basically. Um, insectoids can get kite and armor and quick, both uh, actually quite strong by the sounds of it, uh, especially quick. 
because it gives us basically like a 10% haste. Uh, and then finally, the Rattlings. Uh, the Rattlings have one special one called Mutation, where one of uh, your attribute scores chosen randomly increases by one when you get a new level. This sounds super strong, especially if you get lucky with your stats. But, uh, but yeah, so, so now that we've sort of, I've sort of explained the, the gist of, uh, how character creation goes, my idea for a party was, uh, we would do, like, uh, a pirate crew named after famous mice and rats. Um, and I haven't quite worked, 100% worked out the classes, but I've got the names and everything, so, so, uh, yeah, I've, Let's first off, let's go ahead and make everybody ratlings. If we come across any any diseases, of course, we won't have to worry about them, which will be nice. Um, but yeah, so our first character, we can also choose portraits as you can see, but uh, yeah, our first character shall have this portrait. That's actually a good portrait for our second character, I think. Uh, our third character I think will be this one and uh, finally we will go with this portrait so who do we have well we have Captain Martin we have first mate splinter we have um, Swabby versus Grisby. And uh, finally, we have Quartermaster Gadget. So, uh, if you're not familiar where these names may or may not be from, I uh, suppose I, I should let the secret out. Uh, we're talking uh, Martin the Warrior from Redwall, Splinter, of course, TMNT, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Uh, Swabby Mrs. Brisby, that would be uh, Mrs. Brisby from The Secret of Nim. And uh, Quartermaster Gadget, who is uh, Gadget from the Rescue Rangers, of course. So, uh, yeah, I think that's, that's going to be our party. But now we have to choose traits, skills, and classes, all that good stuff. So I think, um, I don't think the, cla the classes aren't going to be related to the characters' names or anything like that, I don't think. Um, at least not, not intentionally. Um, we just need to pick sort of a, a nice balance of things here. So I think I want... I like the idea of having a sword and, you know, a sword and board guy, so uh, we'll make Martin a knight. Uh, we'll make Splinter... I think we're going to make Splinter a barbarian. And uh, that's because we're going to get a lot of free stat points. Um, now our back line, Mrs. Brisby could be a farmer, it would be interesting, but it's, it would be so much to manage, like, it's, you know, like, when do I eat food, am I going to run out of food, all this kind of stuff, and without knowing anything about the game, it seems, it seems like a really risky pick. We'll come back to her, because uh, I know for a fact that I want a battle mage. I don't see, I don't really see the point in taking a wizard, like, they get more energy, sure, but, um... Battle Mage gets good enough energy, and uh, they get way better HP, and they can wear armor, and they, they just get all around better protection. Well, I guess anybody can wear armor, but they can Battle Mages can wear a little bit more easily. So, uh, my plan is to have those guys, and then I think finally... Um, I tried out firearms. They're okay, but they do uh, jam up a lot. And their damage doesn't seem to scale with anything except for the actual uh, firearm skill, so that would sort of waste some of our, the free skill points that we're going to get, uh, or the free stat points we're going to get, um, because every single one of these characters is going to take mutation, for sure. Uh, but yeah, uh, farmers just super weak initially, but I have a feeling they could, they have the, the potential to get you know really strong. Um, they're kind of that wild card class. Uh, like the goof off in Dragon Warrior 3 or something like that. Um, but, uh, like, Rogue is kind of tempting because 
the extra crit sounds good, and then we'll have somebody who can use like bows and all that kind of thing. Um, that sounds pretty good to me. Um, but alchemist, you know, alchemist is interesting as well. Just to have the herbs multiply, I don't know if we're gonna need them to multiply, and I don't know how quickly they multiply. To be completely honest with you, but I think, yeah, man, it's a tough, just tough, tough choices all around. I don't know what. Is, why don't we? Why don't we be brave? We'll go with farmer, and we'll see how things turn out. This character still probably will end up being a ranged, you know, like rogue bow type or something. Um, so rogue would probably objectively be the uh, the better pick here. But uh, you know, let's let's keep it interesting. So we have our classes selected. Now we need to do our traits. So this is a, our frontliner. Everybody takes mutation, of course. That's critical to our plan here, which is to get as many free stat points as possible. Um, but I think, let's start with uh, Quartermaster Gadget. I'm thinking, well, she's a, a primarily going to be our mage, um, so we need her to have a high willpower. But I think we're also going to give her a high strength, because um, she's going to secondarily use throwing weapons, I think, a little bit. And uh, if I was making this game, I would put in like a battle mage, you know, sword somewhere or something like that. Um, so we want the ability to uh, to wield it, basically. Um, but uh, yeah, one one thing of note is uh, yeah, with these skills, accuracy two points, and it allows you to attack. Uh, with a melee weapon from the back line, because normally only the two front characters can attack with, with uh, melee weapons. So that's important to keep in mind as we build our characters. Um, but yeah, okay, so Captain Martin, he's sort of supposed to be like our one of our tough guys, so we want... We're going to max out his strength, because Rattlings have terrible strength to begin with, and we're going to jack up his vitality. And... Uh, for his additional trait, uh, I guess I should talk about the uh, stats a little bit too. So yeah, strength increases our carrying capacity and our melee weapon damage for most weapons. Daggers actually use dexterity, but uh, many, most melee weapons are probably, as it says, are probably going to use strength. Dexterity affects our accuracy and evasion, um, and the damage we deal with a lot of different types of missile weapons. Um, throwing weapons are based on strength. Missile weapons, like bows and stuff, are based on dexterity. Um, and firearms get no benefit from dexterity, as far as I can tell. Um, vitality... Uh, vitality affects, yeah, the amount of HP we gain um, at first and subsequent levels, so it's important to get vitality early if you're going to do it. Um, and then similarly with willpower and uh, energy. You know, the earlier you get your willpower, the more energy you're going to get. Energy is used to cast spells, swing your sword, all that kind of thing. Um, and uh, the, the power attacks typically take up more energy based on the, the you know, the, the fighter's special ability. But, uh, yeah, I think that, I think the stats-wise, I like, I like where we're going. He is a little bit weak, though. But we're going to get more stat points anyway from, uh when we level up for mutation, so hopefully we'll get lucky there. Now he's a knight, so he's going to have good protection already. So I'm kind of of the mind that maybe we should give him, like, weapon specialization sounds pretty good, or maybe uh, muscular for a little extra strength. Evasive. We also have some resistances that we could give him, but, uh, or straight up extra damage. I think, uh, I think I, I mean, natural armor is basically going to be, because he's going to wear heavy armor, and if it, the, the stats are similar to the last game, I mean, natural armor is going to be worth about half an item, probably. Uh, similar situation with evasive, but, uh, yeah, so that kind of makes me think that I want to give him 
muscular because his strength is kind of low. So I would like him to just have a little bit extra. So yeah, that sounds pretty good. Uh, oh, our barbarian. Um, I was kind of thinking that I might want the barbarian to be able to cast some spells because we're going to be really limited on our spell casting because there's only so many skill points to go go around and we only have one mage. But it's a huge risk to go into spell casting without knowing for sure that Splinter's gonna actually going to be able to cast the spells once we find like a staff or something. Um, so we're not going to go too, too ham into it. Uh, we're just going to... You know, if it happens, it happens. Great, we'll have like a little bit of extra magic on one of the schools. Um, but if not, you know, no big deal. I think I think that's what I think about it. So uh, that means we're gonna max out our strength and we're gonna max out our vitality, I guess. Although, I mean, we could afford to drop a little bit of vitality because we're, I mean, we're gonna get so many HP per level as, from being a barbarian anyway. And, um, yeah, I mean, we should be able to, uh, survive pretty well. So a couple points of willpower I think won't hurt, um, just for that extra energy. So here we will need, I think we're going to give, because this, this character will probably wear light armor, <clears throat> if I had to guess. Um, so natural armor wouldn't be a bad choice but uh, weapon specialization sounds good strong mind might be good again just for the extra willpower extra stats that kind of thing or we could, we could go with evasive um, that sounds you know again that's like another half item type thing why don't we why don't we go with strong mind we'll hope for the best we're, we're not playing optimally here that's not what this party's about this is about just, you know, having fun and making a, a cool thematic build or characters, you know, uh, party of characters. So, uh, so yeah, I think uh, Mrs. Brisby, she's going to be like our main range character. So we want to jack up dexterity. Probably not going to worry about her strength at all. Um, and she's, yeah, she's super weak. So we need to give her some vitality. That's a must. No doubt about it. Also, yeah, different, uh, like... Vitality increases your resistance to um, cold and poison, and then dexterity is uh, fire and shock resistance. So that's important to consider. Uh, but Mrs. Brisby, what shall you take for your uh, additional trait here? Natural armor might not be too bad on this particular character because she's probably going to be the one that wears... She's going to be like our clothy, basically. So having a little bit of extra armor could go a long way on her. I like that idea, actually. I like it a lot. So that leaves Quartermaster Gadget. Uh, well, she's our mage, so... We have to go strong mind here, I think. It's the only, only real smart pick. Actually, I think I'm going to take Strong Mind away from him. I don't, I don't think he's going to need it. Um, instead, I think we're going to go with... Uh, probably not aggressive. I think we're going to go with evasive on him. Because that'll just give him a little bit of extra dodge. Um, and then he'll have a light armor as well. So I think that'll, that should work out fine. Uh, so yeah, final... Final push is uh, is upon us. We need to. Oh yeah, Miss Mrs. Brisby doesn't start with any skills. Like that, that's uh, kind of crappy, but um, no matter. Uh, we shall. For Martin, Martin's going to be using light weapons. So yeah, let's let's go through the skills real quick. Um, Alchemy lets us make potions. Um, at the fourth uh, skill point, we can make stronger healing and energy potions. At fifth level. Uh, when we craft bombs, we get three instead of one. Okay. Uh, athletics increases our HP by 20 per point. And uh, at third level, we get an extra 15 kilograms of carry capacity. Concentration, 20 energy per point. And at third level of energy regeneration, we get an extra 25%. Or sorry, at third level of concentration, we get an extra 25% energy regen when we rest. 
Um, light weapons, 20% damage per point. Um, but at third level, we can dual wield light weapons as long as one is a dagger. And then at uh, fifth skill level, uh, when we do, we can dual wield any light weapons, and uh, and then additionally, we suffer 40% uh, penalty to, to weapon damage when we're dual wielding all the time. Heavy weapons, 20% uh, extra damage per point. But at fifth level, you can wield a two-handed weapon in one hand. That sounds super good. Uh, missile weapons, 20% uh, again per skill point, and then fourth level, our missile weapon attacks have 20, per, uh, 20 points of armor penetration. That's nice. Uh, throwing, 20% damage per point, and then uh, fifth level, we can basically dual wield throwing weapons and throw two at a time, uh, one from each hand. Firearms increases range by one square per point, but it also decreases the chance of the firearm malfunctioning, that's, so that's good. Uh, at 5th level, we achieve mastery and we never malfunction. See... Yeah, I just... And this doesn't actually even increase the firearm damage, it just increases the... The, uh, range. So yeah, I don't think... I feel like I don't like firearms, because the other thing is you can't pick up your ammo from firearms, you just have to hope you find more. Um... So, based on that, yeah, I mean, I'm not really thrilled with the idea of firearms. I'm sure there are some super powerful ones, but probably we, we will probably be skipping them this run. That's, that's how I feel about it right now, anyway. Accuracy. Uh, we get plus 10 accuracy per point. And then at second skill level, we can uh, perform melee attacks from the back row. Uh, critical. Uh, we have... An additional 3% for melee range throwing or firearm, 3% uh, per skill point. And at third level, we can backstab, so really anybody could backstab. Uh, this is with the dagger only for triple damage. And then at fifth level, we can backstab with any any light weapon. So that sounds okay, but that's, that's, that's a long walk to get there. <laughs> Let's put it that way. Uh, armor increases uh, armor points by 5% uh, per skill point, and uh, second level we're proficient with light armor, and then fourth level we get permission, uh, proficient with heavy armor. So this will be important for Martin, for sure. Um, dodge increases evasion by 3 for each skill point, but at third level we get 10% uh, haste, which sounds really good. Uh, very tempting to get that on a lot of characters, but I don't think we're going to have the skill points for it. Uh, so yeah, now we have our spells. Uh, basically, each of these give us an additional 20% um, damage for that element type, for spells of that type. And if we get to the 5th rank, we get plus 50 resistance against that element. So, uh, that sounds really good. But we're probably, we're probably not going to be able to max a lot of these. Um, just due to, the, you know, the amount of skill points that we have. But uh, the other thing that's important to know is uh, some weapons and uh, and spells, and in fact maybe all, well maybe not, not all, not all weapons, but, but yeah, I think that's accurate. Some weapons and some spells are gated be, uh, behind uh, your skill rank. So like you might get a weapon that requires, like we'll see one that requires light weapons 3, for example. And we can't wield it until we have that. Uh, and it'll be similar for, for magic. So, uh, it's something to keep in mind, but I think, basically, yeah, for, for Martin, we're gonna go light weapons, because we want him using, uh, you know, like, one-handed swords, that kind of thing. And then we're also gonna get him started on armor, because we want to get that heavy armor ASAP. Uh, Splinter, of course, is gonna be using heavy weapons, being a barbarian. Um... And I'm thinking we're gonna give Splinter armor as well, because it's a sh it's a short path to get to uh, to get to uh, you know level to get to light armor basically is what I'm trying to get at here. <laughs> but uh, yeah, the other thing to note is we can't uh, put two skill two points into one skill you know right from the get go. We have to spread them out between two different skills. So, yeah, we're gonna, yeah, we'll put this back in armor. Uh, unfortunately, our, our Swabby, Mrs. Brisby, does not get any points. Uh, but Gadget, 
We'll get some and we will give her air magic. And we will give her. Hmm. Water magic was good in the last one because you could freeze. I think air magic stuns. Uh, and then earth magic was really underwhelming, and fire magic was, you know, just kind of okay. Concentration is sort of tempting for the extra energy, but I don't know if we're going to need it, like, right away. So... Why don't we... Why don't we go air and water on her? I think that sounds fine. Ugh, but is it a good idea? Ah, uh, decisions, decisions. Actually, you know what? I uh, kind of do want the extra energy, at least to get to level three. And I don't know that we're gonna get a lot of benefit from having two different schools of magic early on. That's that's kind of my primary concern here. Um, so yeah, why don't we, uh, why don't we go concentration here, just so we can get, you know, some extra spells going on in, uh, you know, tough fights. I think that sounds good. So has every, everybody's spent all of their stat points, all of their skill points. Yeah, that is everything. So, uh, yeah, this, uh, this was a quick look at the, uh, character creation. We've got our, our... Intrepid party here, uh, Captain Martin, First Mate Splinter, Swabby Mrs. Grisby, and Quartermaster Gadget. So, uh, in the next episode, we will get started and uh, see what Grimrock 2 has in store for us. So until then, my name has been Rojo, and thanks for watching.